Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about today is um, we're going to be solving more absolute value problems, but we are going to be checking... for extraneous solutions. So let's um, let's define an extraneous solution first. And we're going to say that an extraneous solution is derived from an original equation That is not a solution of the original equation. An extraneous solution. Alright, here's the key part of extraneous, this right here, extra. It's an, it's an extra answer that you get that doesn't work when you substitute it. It's an extra answer that you get that doesn't work when you substitute it. And I'll show you an example here in a minute. But when you see the term extraneous, just think of this right here. Extra. It's an extra solution. If you're asked to check for extraneous solutions, that means check your answers. Because you may have done all your steps perfect to get two solutions, but when you substitute them back in, only one of them might work. Or neither one of them may work. Alright? They're extraneous. And I'm going to show you what that means right here. So let's take, we're looking for the solution of the, abs the absolute value of 3x plus 2. Equals 4x plus 5. Did you peek through the window to see who it was before you let him in? No. Okay. In the future, if that when that happens, that's what we have to start doing. Thank you. Okay. So right here, what we got? We're gonna we're gonna solve and we're gonna check for extraneous solutions. So we've got just the absolute value symbol on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So we're going to rewrite the equation. Now you've got to be careful when you rewrite these equations because you've got two terms on the right-hand side. So we're going to take the 3x plus 2 and we're going to make it equal to the 4x plus 5. And then we've got to take the 3x plus 2 and we've got to make it equal to the negative of the 4x plus 5. So what that means is you have to negate both terms in that binomial. So on the right, this right equation, you're going to get 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 4x minus 5. And now we're going to solve both and we're going to check 
both solutions in the original equation. So if we subtract 3x from each side, then 2 is equal to x plus 5, and subtract 5 from each side, and negative 3 is equal to x. So there's one possible solution. Now we're going to solve this other equation. And I'm going to add 4x to each side. So 7x plus 2 equals negative 5. Subtract 2 from each side. seven x equals negative seven and then divide by seven and we get another solution of x equals negative one now we have to check these alright we have to check for extraneous solutions. So you have to take these two solutions that you got and individually you have to substitute them back into the original equation. So I'm going to check this negative 3 first. So we've got the absolute value of 3 and where the x is we're going to replace it with a negative 3 plus 2 equal to 4 times the negative 3 plus 5. So on the left hand side in the absolute value symbol we get the absolute value of negative 9 plus 2 equals negative 12 plus 5. So on the left hand side we get the absolute value of negative 7 equals negative 7. So, can an absolute value ever be equal to a negative? It can't, can it? So, this solution right here is extraneous. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in the original equation. So now we're going to check the other one. So back into that original equation, we got 3 times now a negative 1 plus 2 equal to a 4 times the negative 1 plus 5. So in the absolute value symbols on the left, Let's see, what do we get? 3 times 3 times the uh, negative 1, which is we get negative 3 plus 2. And then 4 times negative 1 on the right is negative 4 plus 5. So if we finish up this absolute value symbol, we get negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. We get the absolute value of negative 1 equals negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. So this works. So this is your only solution to that problem. So when, you ask, when you're asked to solve the equation and check for extraneous solutions, we talked about yesterday checking your solutions. And I told you that you should always check them, but I know we get lazy and we don't. But especially when the directions say to check for extraneous solutions, that in most cases it means there is one. So you have to check both of your answers in the original equation.
The one that doesn't work is extraneous. It's not a solution. The one that does work is the only solution to the equation. Got it? All right, so we're going to do another one. And the question will look like, find the solution find the solution or solve for X and check for extraneous solutions and this time we got in the absolute value symbol a 5x minus 2 And it's equal to a 7x plus 14. So since there's just the absolute value symbol on the left hand side, we're going to rewrite this to 2 going to rewrite it as two equations. So we get the 5x minus 2 equal to 7x plus 14. And then we get the 5x plus 2, I'm sorry, minus 2. Equal to the negative of or the opposite of 7x plus 14. So I'm going to distribute this negative 1 right now. So 5x minus 2 equals negative 7x minus 14. And I'm going to finish this one over here. So we're going to add 7x to each side. So 12x minus 2 equals negative 14. <coughs> I'm going to add 2 to each side. So the 12x is equal to negative 12. And then divide by 12. And we get x being equal to negative 1. Going to solve this other equation. Going to subtract 5x from each side. So negative 2 equals 2x plus 14. Subtract 14 from each side. Negative 16 is going to equal 2x. And then divide by 2. So another possible solution is negative 8 is equal to x. So now we check them both in the original equation. So here are the absolute value of 5 times negative 8 minus 2 equals 7 times negative 8 plus 14. If you've got your calculator, you can do all of this in one step. You can do 5 times 8 negative equals and then minus 2 equals and in here you're going to get negative 42 
and then you can type all of this in on the right hand side into your calculator. You got 7 times 8 negative again and then plus a 14 and you get a negative 42 and now again you've got an absolute value equal to a negative and that doesn't work does it? That can't happen. So this negative 8 that solution doesn't work. Doesn't satisfy the original equation. So we're going to check this other one. So we got a 5 times negative 1 minus 2 equal to a 7 times negative 1 plus 14. So in the absolute value symbols on the left, 5 times 1 negative minus 2, we get negative 7. And then on the right hand side, 7 times 1 negative plus 14, that's a positive 7. And the absolute value of negative 7 is equal to positive 7, so that works. So this is your only solution. Not difficult work, but a lot of steps. So you need to be careful. Be careful in each step, especially with your positives and your negatives. One mistake with a positive or a negative could, ch could could change the outcome here. You have to be able to identify the extraneous solutions. Everybody clear on that? Okay, I'm going to give you some problems to practice. And then, second part of class, we're just going to continue to solve absolute value equations, and some of them have some more steps than we've done this week. Um, but I want you to just be able to see some examples and then work some problems that have a few things in them that are a little bit different than what we've been looking at. So here's your first set of practice problems. All right, I'm just going to give you three because I know there's a bunch of steps. So. All right, go ahead and do those problems. And... Check for extraneous solutions. So you guys that are at home, I'm gonna give you um, gonna give you 20 minutes. I'll start a a second Zoom meeting here at 10:59. Uh, so I'm gonna set my timer for 19 minutes, and you guys can check back in at that time. Any questions? Okay.